There are things in our history that you probably never imagined. Switzerland, for example. You know where Switzerland is, right? That beautiful little country where my grandfathers come from, in the mountains between Italy and Germany. Switzerland. Did you know that Muslims were in Switzerland in force for 150 years? Very interesting. How did they get there? Caliphate of Cordoba. The Caliphate of Cordoba. What? And what would they be interested in doing in Switzerland? Oh, they were smart people. And how did they do it? Sea power. Because Spain is always a sea power. Portugal is always a sea power. But the Muslims in Spain and Portugal, they controlled the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. And they built incredible ships. They built incredible ships. And why did they build such incredible ships? They were also ships of war. Vikings. The Vikings. So, and why did the Vikings even appear in history? Muslim Spain and Portugal. Because Muslim Spain and Portugal became so wealthy that they dried up the wealth of Northern Europe. This is pretty well proven in economic history. And countries like what is today Denmark and Norway and Sweden and England and Northern Germany and Holland, they became poor because nobody would go there anymore. It's like there's no profit. Merchants are always looking for profit. The merchants that are in Italy and France and elsewhere, they no longer want to go north because what do you get there? Sheepskin, flax, wood. You go to Spain and Portugal, all you have to do is pay jizya. You pay the jizya and you're protected by the state. And then you get gold and silver and silk and oranges and lemons and everything in the world. It's really amazing. This is true. And I could even tell you because you had people at the University of Michigan who were the masters of this. I don't know if the one in particular is still alive. His name is Ehrenkreutz. Is he still alive? You know, Professor Ehrenkreutz, he was one of my companions. He was, he was the person who worked on this. Okay, so this meant the Vikings have to come out. And the Vikings, you, you probably have seen movies about Vikings. Those are usually exaggerated. But the Vikings will come out. Where did the Vikings first go? Lisbon, Portugal, great Muslim city, great Muslim city. And they sack it because Lisbon had never been protected from the Atlantic because of the fact they didn't have any enemies on the Atlantic. And they sacked Lisbon and they took out of it tons of goods and women and children as, as well. And then they come down to attack Seville. These are all Muslim cities, Muslim ports. And uh, the caliph at that time, his name was Abdurrahman III. He said, he was building the mosque of Cordoba. And he said, I won't put a brick on another brick until we get rid of these fire worshippers. He called them fire worshippers. He also called them Normans, Northmen. Nurman, they called them Northmen. They called themselves Northmen as well. He said, I, I won't do, he said, stop the mosque. He said, we will fight these people. We will defeat these people. We'll teach them a lesson. You don't do this to our cities. You want to trade with us? That's one thing. But you want to do this? No, we will teach you a lesson. And the great Maliki scholar of Cordoba at that time is one of our famous teachers, Ibn al-Habib. He said, you are the Khalifa. You know, he didn't say you can chew gum and walk at the same time. They didn't chew gum then. But he said that, you know, you can still build the mosque and you can still take care of the Vikings. And they declared jihad. And in 100 days, the Vikings were finished. Finished. And they were punished. And many of the Vikings became Muslims. And they were settled in Spain 
in a city that I visited called Jerez de la, de la Frontera. Jerez de la Frontera, which we called in Arabic Sheresh. And it always remained a Scandinavian Muslim city. And there were Vikings in Denmark as well. And ambassadors went to Den Denmark to see who are these Vikings and how do they fight? Because they have these really fast ships that they use to attack. But what do they do with the women and children? Because they take lots of women and lots of children, we have to ransom them. In Islamic law, you must ransom the prisoner. All the women and children they've taken off to Denmark, we've got to get them back. This is also why the ambassador is going. Is we'll pay you gold, we'll get them back. But give back our children, give back our women. Okay, so uh, they go there, but also they go there to learn who are these people and how do they fight. And one of the things they learn is that they have war boats. That's what you see in the movies, right? But they have barges. And the barges are what they put, where they put the women and children. The barges are where they put the gold and silver. Okay, so this means that they are actually not so, that they have vulnerability because the barges don't move very fast. And that means that they have to always protect their barges at sea. And so they say then, this is the way we'll deal with the Vikings. We will build ships that are as fast as their ships. And our ships will have cannons on the front, which they call nefalta. Nefalta means nephthalene cannons. They're cannons that use gassy oil. And you put fire to it and it explodes and it shoots out a ball of fire. And it will burn up their ships. And then on the back we will have archers with crossbows and with regular bows. And if you want to look at, you've seen how samurais have made swords? Samurai sword is incredible. We made swords that would have competed with that. We made arrows. We were really good at what we did. So they said, we'll have our archers and they will have so many arrows that they can fight for a whole week without stopping. And then we'll have boarding areas because we're going to conquer the Vikings at sea. We're not going to just drive them off. And then peace was made with the Vikings for about 16 years. The old king died. Many Vikings became Muslims during that time. The old king died. The new king said, the old king made the treaty. I didn't make the treaty. I don't agree. And so he came back, you know, to maybe attack Lisbon and Seville. Or other cities. There are lots of cities in Spain and Portugal. But also, they said, set up towers along the whole coast. And I, you can go there. I, I'd love to take you there. The whole Portuguese coast still has those towers. And the Spanish coast also has a lot of those towers. But they were really needed in the Portuguese coast. And these cow towers are so close to each other that they can send smoke signals, light signals, mirror signals. And they have a whole code to communicate. And then any time a Viking ship appears, you send the signals out, whether it is day or night, and we go out and get them on the sea. You've got to fight them on the sea. You cannot let them attack you on land. And, and so the Vikings come back. The first time when they attacked, Liz, attacked Lisbon, they had like 50 ships. The second time, they had almost 70. 70 warriors, 70 ships of warriors, of Viking warriors. And the Muslims attacked them at sea. And they burned half the fleet. And, the and they took all their barges. And the rest of the fleets escaped. And they went into the Mediterranean. They attacked Morocco, Nadur. They attacked other places. Okay, And that is one of the most important battles in history. You remember that when you studied in school. You never heard about that, did you? But that is one of the most important battles in human history. And then those ships, they will then take to Mallorca. All of the islands of the Mediterranean were Muslim islands. They, all of the islands of the Mediterranean embraced Islam even before Spain and Portugal. Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza. Have you ever been to Ibiza? Ibiza. What word is Ibiza from? From Arabic. Yabisa. Dry island. Yabisa. Ibiza. 
And then they establish ships in Mallorca, and on that basis they go up to Switzerland from the Rhone River. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. We have got to write history. We've got to write history. We gave a lesson in Detroit, you know, on African roots in America, African Muslim roots in America, and also pre-Muslim roots in America. And that's not a dream, that's not an illusion, that's historical fact. But why didn't we study that in our history books? We've got to write our own history books, bi ta'ala.